to prepare for the final destination. Yeah, I did. We did. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I definitely I watched all of them. Um, actually, on the plane right up to Vancouver, I started watching them, and which was it was a bad idea because a it's a plane, you know, that's a problem, and b it's I'm I'm screaming every time someone dies, and I forget that people are sleeping all around me in this plane. Yeah, I I had seen all the films growing up, so I knew exactly what I was getting into. Um, but you have to do a little bit of a marathon, which is a heavy diet of deaths, and you <laughs> try to watch them in all one day. That is a uh, it's, it's almost too much. Yeah. Nice alliteration. Uh, yeah, to prepare for this, it was, for my scenes, there was no preparation. Other than watching the movies and, you know, catching up with everything. But, um, yeah, what you see is what you get. How do you prepare for laser eye surgery? How do you become, you know, get emotionally into that death scene? So there was no preparation. It was just... All right, speculum in my eye. Let's get ready to die. <laughs> I just told my friends, could you just check his method? Just punch know? me in the face a few times. <laughs>shot my death scene um, for one, one of the days the first day was from 6 p.m. to 9 o'clock in the morning and they numbed my eye all night and my the speculum was in and out of my eye probably 70 times so yeah it was grueling because you know they'd fix you have these not to mention these bright lights on me this camera that's so close to my face with this just speculum oh well we got to figure out this lighting I'm like okay guys let me just uh, hang out here with the speculum in my eye and then the head vice and it was very tough. I should have a bit of a lazy eye the next day. I did. I, I, I finished at 9 a.m. so I, came, I went back to downtown Vancouver and I was like, hey guys, you're a little sexy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, complete lazy eye. It was exciting, actually, because, again, I'd seen all these films, and I knew very much the rules of Final Destination, and so this is a, a bit of a new element to the franchise, someone that tries to uh, change fate. And uh, for him, Peter basically starts out the film uh, with his whole life in order, and he knows exactly how he wants to, to, to live and how to get there. And then these terrible things happen that he can't explain, but he has to find an answer, and in doing that, he... Um, he gets dark, <laughs> which is really fun. Uh, yeah, it was, it was really fun, and it, it was cool to play, you know, all different spectrums uh, of the human personality. Uh, it was it was it was a challenge. I used to be a gymnast for um, thirteen and a half years, but um, I. Uh, I, the day I got the part, I went straight to a gym, put on my grips for the first time in six years, and I was like, let's see what I can do. And it wasn't much, TV, it was not. Um, so I just, then I decided to spend like about three weeks just building up my muscles. So I just conditioned for like an hour in the morning, an hour at night. Um, and then after three weeks, I was like, okay, now I've built up this muscle, like let's see what tricks I can still do. And so I started doing, you know, three hour workouts about five or six days a week. And um, it kind of, it didn't all come back, but a lot of it came back, it was pretty exciting. He was just so incredibly passionate. Um, Stephen Quayle is incredibly talented, and, and he's always thinking 30 steps ahead. And when I found out that I was cast for this movie, it was incredibly daunting and a little intimidating to know, okay, Stephen Quayle has worked alongside James Cameron on The Abyss, Titanic, Avatar. So he, he wanted to prove himself, and he did. He nailed it, and he took each and every one of us out to dinner, you know, spent some time with us, got to know us, um, and he was just honest in a good way and, you know, those grueling hours, he was the kind of guy who said, I'm passionate about this, I, I love it, I love what I'm doing, I don't care how tired I am, I just love, I love this movie and I love what's going to happen in this. The, the first thing that he did when we all arrived in Vancouver was he took us to uh, the headquarters of the production uh, studio offices and showed us um, this previs, which is basically, <clears throat> you know, computer animated sequence of that first 10 minutes. So even though we're all kind of stick figures, he showed us exactly how, because you read the script and it's then this piece drops off, then that piece drops off, and then somebody's running, and then you think, okay, well, how's this really going to look? Um, and from that minute on, we knew we were in good hands. His, uh, 
his energy and, it, and enthusiasm is just infectious. I mean, he's a self-proclaimed geek in all of this stuff. So it was great to, to it was a nice peace of mind knowing that he was definitely going to do it right. And uh, he, uh, he, we just followed orders. They were just great with the gymnastics because like, they knew how, um, you know, all these tricks were still pretty new for me again um, and that I could only probably do them two to five times, you know. Um, so it was great just how supportive everyone was. And if I try the trick and I would completely fall, which happens, I'd be like, it's okay, Ellen. Just get back, do it your best, try it again. Um, so he was just, he was great. FD4 um, in the pool with that boy who gets, yeah, let's just leave Arlen it at that. It's so gross, right? It's disgusting. I, I, I still just remember from uh, the first one, you know, the girl just stepping out on the street and getting hit by the, it just oh, comes God. out of nowhere and everybody, <laughs> yeah. uh, I literally think I threw my popcorn off. <laughs> it, uh, that, one, that one always haunts me. Every day you learn something. Every day you learn, and particularly on this one, I've never worked on 3D before. Uh, it's a very specific uh, technical process. So just seeing how, you know, one of one of the things that um, <clears throat> I learned from Stephen and, and all of us just shooting in 3D is you have to be super specific with depth, obviously. So um, moving just a little bit can throw everything out of off kilter, and then you can't use that which is different from kind of traditional film.